get your binging pants ready because the new DC streaming service is launching soon. DC announced this week that DC Universe will be launching on September 15th, which is apparently Batman Day. Along with a rotating library of comic books, the subscription service will also be the one-stop shop for generations worth of movies, TV shows, and cartoons, some of which have been remastered in full HD. Don't expect much for original content right off the bat, though. Though DC Universe has several original shows in the works, so far only Titans has a set release date for October 12th. You won't be binging these new shows either, as episodes will be released every Friday. According to Jim Lee, their goal for DC Universe is to have new content every week of the year. In Star Wars news, is any released a more in-depth look at the characters of Star Wars Resistance? We're already familiar with the main character of the show, Kaz, a young Resistance volunteer assigned to live on a giant space gas station slash racing hub. In spite of the show being called Star Wars Resistance and the premise centering around Kaz spying on the First Order, it seems that the primary focus of the story will focus on Team Fireball, the racing crew Kaz is using as his cover. Heading this crew is Jarek Yeager, a former member of the Resistance trying to keep his head down. Obviously, that won't go as well as he hopes. And also on the team are Tam Revora and Niku, the tough one and goofy one respectively. So, actually not much more that we didn't already know here. For those wondering about the tone of the show, the cast and crew do make it abundantly clear that the show is meant to skew young, so naturally, Star Wars Resistance will be premiering at 10 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, October 7th, a school night. If you're looking for a grittier Star Wars experience, though, you might have to head for video games. PAX West is happening this weekend, but there's already a lot of news dripping out, including a first look at Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. Not a Star Wars game, but definitely Star Wars influenced, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw will be a prequel to the first game that changes things up by having a specific main character as opposed to a faceless player avatar. Meanwhile, good news for fans of poop-filled dungeons, it was revealed this week that The Binding of Isaac is getting another final DLC expansion. The Binding of Isaac Repentance will introduce even more power-ups, maps, and enemies to the landmark roguelite dungeon crawler. From Devolver Digital, Gato Robot was revealed, showing off a very Metroid-inspired adventure game that looks like it was made for the original Game Boy. And while Gato Robot is a new property that looks like an old game, we also have old properties looking like new games. Streets of Rage is coming out with a new entry after nearly two and a half decades with Streets of Rage 4. Finally from Nintendo, a new IP for mobile platforms, but still a new Nintendo IP. Dragalia Lost is set in a world where dragons and humans coexist and team up to fight monsters and restore magic crystals and generally do all that typical fantasy RPG stuff. The game will be a party-based action RPG that has you grinding dungeons, fighting bosses, collecting loot, recruiting new party members, and setting them up with dragon allies for extra power. Naturally, the game will be free to play, but expect some level of microtransactions to be strongly encouraged. Regalia Lost will be available on mobile devices on September 27th. Heading into new releases, James Wan's second most successful shared movie universe continues this week with... The Nun. The movie with the most effective advertisement that people barely saw, The Nun adds a new story to the Conjuring universe, which may or may not be linked to the Insidious universe, but regardless, it looks super creepy. Next up, there's... Peppermint. Jennifer Gardner is back in action. After crime claims her family, she goes off the grid, forges herself into a weapon of revenge, and basically becomes the Punisher, but as Jennifer Gardner, which sounds good to me. Heading into television, if there's not enough purge in your life yet, USA has you covered with a new 10-episode TV series starting this week. But you don't need to purge to be lawless. Mayans premieres on FX this week. The Sons of Anarchy sequel series centers on an up-and-coming prospect who may or may not ultimately live to regret his life choices. Speaking of dastardly gangs, it's time to go back to Philadelphia on FXX with the 13th season of It's Always Sunny. That's a long time for a show to come up with increasingly dark humor. Over on Netflix, Iron Fist is back for its new season. Let's just hope that lessons were learned from the previous series and move on from there. Over in books, The Legend of Korra continues with the concluding entry of the Turf Wars trilogy, the canon graphic novel follow-up to the animated series. And oddly enough, we have another Cthulhu-Sherlock Holmes crossover, this time the Cthulhu casebooks Sherlock Holmes and the Misotonic Monstrosities. Any more of these and it's going to become its own subgenre. In video games, the biggest release this week has to be Marvel's Spider-Man. It seems like it's taken forever, but the web-slinging adventure is finally arriving on PS4. 
Meanwhile, hitting PC this week is Monster Pub, a cute little casual pixel art game that's like Cheers, but with monsters. In Ninjin Clash of Carrots, you play as either a ninja rabbit or a fox in a wacky beat-em-up that looks neat but uh, chaotic to say the least, and much of the same can be said about Claws of Furry, except it has ninja cats instead. For major releases, Dragon Quest XI Echoes of an Elusive Age hits PC and consoles this week to satisfy your JRPG needs. And Zone of Enders, the second runner, Mars, is a PC remaster of the classic mech game. It's not just getting a visual update from its PS2 origins, though. The new version will be putting you in the pilot seat for full VR. Going back to low-budget releases, Cyburst is a side-scrolling action game with some nice sprite work and a bunch of characters to play with. And for multiplayer fun, Groundless has an interesting concept. It's a 2v2 arena game where victory depends on your ability to create or remove the ground under your opponents. Next up is The Inner Friend, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at here, and I'm not sure I should even be looking at it, but here it is, and we're not done with the creepy yet. Another Sight is an adventure game about a blind teenager and a cat exploring a crazy looking steampunk world. Meanwhile, on Planet Alpha, we have a side-scrolling platformer set on a crazy-looking alien world, so plenty of variety to go around. For fans of Smash TV, Galaxy Champions TV is more than a little inspired by the arcade original, but as far as games that straddle the line of copyright infringement go, it's a pretty good-looking one. Speaking of knockoffs, Immortal Unchained may be a Dark Souls clone, but with a neat gothic sci-fi setting, it's at least a cool-looking Dark Souls clone. Over on the Switch, Nintendo continues to draw in every indie title they can get their hands on, starting with Devolver Digital's 2015 Brill Force, which hits the system this week for some pixel art action. So does 2016's Hyperlight Drifter. The top-down indie darling has made waves on the PC and is now available wherever you go. As is Siggy, Farts for Melusina. Released on PC last year, the Ghost and Ghouls parody is an inexpensive addition to the Switch library. But the Switch isn't without new releases this week. There's SNK Heroines, Tag Team Friendsly, a shamelessly sexy 2D fighter featuring SNK's most popular waifus, including Terry Bogard. Yep, this is happening. That leaves us with this week's awesome video. It's taken a while, but Team 4 Star's Dragon Ball Z Abridged is finally starting to wrap up the Cell Saga with part one of their 60th episode. Ladies and gentlemen at home, the terrible Cell is now doing one of two things I'm pretty sure we can't show either on network television. That's everything for this week, so will you be getting DC Universe out of the gate? Will you wait, or are you not interested at all? Let me know in the comments. As always, I appreciate likes and appreciate subscribers even more, so be sure to share this video with your friends and have a great week!